So the first thing we've done is prime the model and this one has been sprayed with lead belcher because he's going to be one of the iron snakes. Now what we need to do is apply a shade all over which is a more liquid paint which is going to run and put the pigment in the nooks and crannies and the recesses there to add some shadow and depth. And for this we're using Norn Oil. So just load up the brush and then apply it all over the miniature. So we make sure we get into all those recesses and all the nooks and crannies. And we spread that across so we get a nice even coat of shade across the model. Don't be afraid to slap it on. You can always move it around on the mini chat and be careful to watch out for any areas of pooling or tidying. You do notice that happen. Just use your brush to spread it across and work that into the recesses there too. So this should be nice and quick to do. We'll do it all over the gun there as well. Basically, what we're going to do at the moment is all over all areas of the mini chat and then pick out the details afterwards. So just a backpack to go. So we're going to use that excess we've got there to spread across the rest of the bits we need to do. Ah, don't knock your camera with your brush handle. And that is your miniature shaded. That's nice and quick. Nice and simple, nice and straightforward. It does take a little while to dry, so what we can do is um, move on to shade some others while we're waiting for that to happen. And one of the nice things about applying your shades in batches like this is by the time that you finish putting it on the last model, the first model should be nice and dry and ready for your next stage. So we can see that there. You can see how the black is sitting in all the nooks and crannies, all the recesses, and that adds a lot more depth and a lot more definition to the miniature there too. So the shades will dry in our Infernus Marine. Uh, let's call him Bernard. It's a good name for an Infernus Marine. So now what we're gonna do is bring out some of those details, some highlights with a technique called dry brushing. So what we're gonna use for this is a dry brush. We need a lighter paint than the one we've used. So we're gonna go for Iron Hand Steel here which is uh, lighter than the lead belcher, certainly after it's had that uh, black shade on it as well and toned that down a bit. But we've also got a bit of wiggle room if we want to go a bit lighter as well too. So it's harder to uh, yeah, make things darker than it is to go lighter with the highlights there too. Now this is a little trick that I picked up from a chap who used to paint the scenery for Games Workshop called James during one of the managers meetings. Is use a bit of corrugated card for your dry brushing. So you load the paint on, and then take that off with the card. So this removes a lot of the moisture, but not all of it. You can see there on the corrugation where it's uh, going over the raised areas. Another tip I like to do, just use the back of my hand, feel that, just to feel that it does feel nice and dry. When you're happy with that, just bring that all over the model. The great thing with this is you don't have to be too neat. You're gonna get everything. You can see there, it's starting to hit the lighter areas lightening that silver up for us and put that lighter colour paint on the edges where the light would catch. It's a quick and easy way to do your highlights. So with a spray, a shade and a highlight, we've got all of the silvers done in pretty much no time at all. And again, if you are working on batches, it's a great way to get your whole sets done or your whole squads done in very little time. And that is Bernard highlighted. I like dry brush, I'm a big fan of it. It's a lot of reward for very little effort. So with the shade and the dry brush done, that is the armor all ready to go. Now what we're gonna do is pick out some of the bits of metallics to give those different tones and textures so they just stood out from the armor a bit. Things like the, uh, the working bits on the guns and the vents on the backpack. And for that, we're gonna darken those with a touch of a contrast paint, Basilicanum Gray. So just load up a bit on the brush. And then just work this on. So we can see there, how that is changing the tone on the uh, darker working metallics there as well. Just 
spread that over all nice and easy. There's some bits here we're going to pick out in different colours like brasses and silvers and the casing on the gun is going to be a black. But at the moment we're just going to worry about getting a nice even coverage over all of those areas. Like that. And I also like to do the vents on the backpack. It's there as well too. So again, like with the other contrast paints and shades, just try and watch out for pulling and get that nice even coverage over all of the areas of the model that we want done. Next we're going to use some Black Legion to pick out the gun casing, uh, any wires and also the kind of ribbed undersuit to the armour there to show in between the gaps in the knees, the elbows and by the top of the thighs as well. Now Black Legion is one of my favourite contrast paints, it gives a real nice coverage, it also flows off your brush really, really fluidly, really well too. So let's get a bit on there and then we're going to work that nice and carefully, so we're being a bit more careful with application here, a bit more precise into the areas that we want black. So we've got the you know, see. I always like to pick, I don't know what these are, I don't know if they're straps to keep the backpack on or whatnot, but it's a nice opportunity to put a little bit of colour there break up that silver as well so we're going to pick out those let's go with straps and there the casing on the weapon again try and avoid picking out the other bits like the uh the flame muzzle there uh the purity seal but if we do get them it's not the end of the world because we can always paint those when we come to do them the other colors so the black area is picked out we're now going to start to block out some of the colors and we're going to kick off with a white now for this i'm going for an off white with gray sear which again just allows us to go up with a highlight there too now the trick with this is we want to thin the paint down a little bit so two three blobs of paint with one blob of water so we've got a nice consistency that just runs off the brush. Keep a nice point on the brush, load up your palette, make sure you've not got too much on. And then we're going to go for a couple of thin coats, two thin coats, better than one thick one. Actually sounds quite good, somebody ought to coin that and uh, make a profession out of it, eh? <laughs> uh, yeah, so we don't want to put the paint on too thick. Not the uh, camera with the brush again. Sorry, right, we'll get Heath to edit that out for us. There we go. Um, so we're also going to pick out the kneecaps here as well, just to break up that silver for us and give us a nice little splash of colour. I also find knee pads uh, great for adding things like uh, squad markings, any campaign badges, uh, chapter symbols, etc. But that white is just breaking up that silver for us there too. So we're going to carry on doing this and then get back to you when we're ready for the next stage. So that's the white bits all picked out. It was probably closer to three coats, but it's worth that time and effort. As you can see, we've got that nice, smooth uh, base there too, especially we're going to be applying some uh, decals and transfers to that without any texture to it. So now we're going to carry on blocking out some of the base colors with a bit of Mephiston Red. So again, we're just gonna thin that down, a bit of water, a couple of blobs of paint. And we're gonna use this on, make sure we've got a nice point on the brush, there we go. We're gonna use this on the trims of the shoulder pads. So a little trick here is rather than use the tip of the brush, because these are raised, we can just use the edge of the brush and that's just going to catch that raised detail there. It's lovely and neat. That just picks up that rim of the shoulder pad too. Now if you do make a mistake, get it in the white bit. We can always touch that back over with the grey seer. If your really speed is your main kind of 
bugbear for painting. You can always paint the whole shoulder pad white or we'll keep it separate and spray it with the gray sear. And then uh, you can hit that with a contrast paint. But the reason I've chose to use the Mephiston Red paint paint rather than the contrast is because I may want to do some freehand and some squad markings, campaign markings on things like shoulder pads and certainly the, um, the pauldron shields on the Terminator Captain. So that's going to give us more control with the paint. Remember at this bit as well that your models are three dimensional. So you've got the bits on the inside to get there too. For these you can use the uh, tip of the brush as usual. Right, so I'm going to finish this off and get back to you when he's done. We're ready for the next stage. So that is the reds of the shoulder pads picked out. And what I've done at this stage is also gone back in and just added a thin black line with the uh, Black Legion contrast paint there to just give a bit more definition between the reds and the whites. You could always stick a shade over that, but that can be a bit messy and you can have to go back and tidy up. So now what we're gonna do is carry on adding a bit of color. We can see that that red and the white is really kind of making that pop. We're gonna do the Aquila on his chest next in the Retributor armor. Just take a touch of water. We don't need too much water in metallics. It will tend to uh, break down the properties there too. We just need a little bit to help it flow a little better. Put a nice point on the brush. A point in your brush is always important because it's got more control over where that goes. Lovely. And then we are just going to paint that Aquila in the gold. And this one is the Retributor Armour. This is one of my favorite paints. I absolutely love the color. I love the color coverage of the Retributor. Now, some Marines, especially with the Aquilas, can have the guns across the chest. Uh, Bernard here is shooting from the hip like a badass. They do have the guns across the chest. A nice tip is to turn the model on its side like that. And then you can get in from a different angle and pick that Aquila out there too. Now, at this stage, it's always worth having a look to see if they've got any little trinkets or um, crux terminatus or markings around the belt. We don't here. So that is that done. Ready for a shade. So as we can see, that gold Aquila really does break up that silver. Adds a splash of color. And there's a lot of detail there as well. But don't worry, it's really easy to pick out. I'm gonna go back to the shade paint. And this time we're using Reichlin Flesh Shade. So it's a ready browny colour designed for skin tones, but that warm ready brown works really well with gold as well there too. So you just load the brush up. Uh, don't worry about thinning your paint down. Pop it on. You can see there, picks out all of the detail in those feathers on the Aquila and does the hard work for us. Bish, bash, bosh, jobs are good. So we've also picked out a cool little skull and crossbones on the um, ammo case for his pyroblaster, um, which we've picked out given the right clean flesh shade as well. We're gonna stick with the gold, but we're gonna drop down to a darker one now with Balthazar gold. I'm just gonna pick out some of the working bits on the weapons there too. So again, just a touch of water on your palette. Okay. We don't want too much because it's going to thin down the metallics too much there as well. Make them flake a bit. Big blob of your... Uh, another blob. Cool. Now let's uh, get painting. Take that. We're going to pick out the muzzle on the pyre blaster. Again, this is like a working gold, so it looks a lot different, a lot darker. It's that ornate gold that we've got on the Aquila. Yeah. Um, we're also going to use the edge of the brush like we did for the shoulder pads, shoulder pads uh, just to pick out the casing of the uh, ammo canister for the Pyre Blaster there too. And I don't know what this bit is, but it's on a lot of the new uh, Primaris guns. So if you do know, uh, let us know in the comments what it is. But this bit here is like a canister, cylinder that sits on the top. 
again all of them have them there too the uh, the bolt rifles the hell blasters these new pyre blasters it's very common we're going to pick that out in the balthazar gold as well so we're just going to get this finished off on camera and be back with you in a second so we can see there's a nice difference between that ornate gold and the working gold there too on the gun just going to um, lean into that a lot more by using a different shade, this time a darker shade of Agrax Earth Shade. Straight over, going to pick out those details. And um, this is again another paint like the Norn Oil that I think everyone should have in their uh, paint sets at home there. It's such a useful one one that you find yourself using for a lot of things there too. So the shades are designed to flow in the recesses and add the depth and shadow and browns and blacks being dark natural colours uh, work really well for your shadows and your shading which is why you should have these colours in your arsenal in my humble opinion. Really quick, really simple to do. Right, so next we have the purity seals, and for that we're going to use Rekar Flesh for the uh, parchment and Screamer Pink for the wax seal on the top. Now the reason I've gone for a Screamer Pink rather than a red is if some of the models have them attached to the shoulder pads or uh, some of the characters have them to the capes, it's just a different colour, so it will stand out a bit more to those areas as well. So really quick, really simple, really straightforward, just pick those out. I also like to start with the lighter colour as well, uh, so you don't run the risk of that looking pink if we're to start with the pink first, if you haven't quite cleared it all out in your brush. So that's the one on his Pyroblaster done. I mean, personally, I wouldn't keep a uh, flammable bit of parchment on a flamethrower, but I'm not a badass like Bernard. You know, he's obviously earned these for heroic deeds, so he knows a bit more about Pyroblasters than I do. So we've got those done. Nice and quick, we're going to hit these with a shade when they're done. Clean out your brush. And then a bit of Screamer Pink. Just to pick out the wax. And Screamer Pink's a colour I like very much as well. I tend to use it for a lot of small details. Uh, highlights for purples. It's uh, just a really nice kind of vibrant colour. There we go, boobity bubbly boo, purity seals, ready for shading. Next up we've got a bit of thundier brown paint and we are going to pick out the gun holster and the ammo pouches. There we go, we've got a pistol on his waist. And then some ammo pouches and uh, packs just here too. So again, this is quite nice. A lot of people don't bother gluing these on. Um, with these push fit models, you don't have a choice. But again, I think it's just a nice little detail that breaks up some of that block color for us and just makes the models a bit more interesting to look at there too. There we go. And with those colours dry, we're going to hit the purity seal with the Agrax Earth Shade. A nice, quick, let the paint do the work for you. Remember to get the back if they're visible. And then finally, a better non oil on the ammo pouches and the leather holster there too. So with the uh, brown being quite a dark brown, we've gone for the black rather than the Agrax Earth shade just so it gives it a bit more definition, a bit more contrast and I quite like my leathers looking uh, nice and dark as well there. And there we go. And finally we're going to do the eye lenses. So one of the nice things about having a uh, metallic silver helmet 
is that we could just use a bit of contrast, in this case, Telesar Blue. Pop that in the lenses there, and then that's them done. Now, all we need to do now is get that texture on the base. Now, basing is one of my favorite bits because again, you get a lot of effort and a lot of reward, so a lot of reward for very little effort. So get me words the right way around. Again, Heath could probably edit that bit out for us. So I'm using Sterling Battlemire here. Um, which is like a dark brown. And we're going to dry brush that up with some reddish browns to look like the boards that we got free for pre-order in Leviathan. Uh, you just scoop that out with your texture tool. It's certainly worth picking one of these up if you are using any texture paints. Um, it's also worth knowing that this one is Sterling Matavire by Games Workshop, but there are some cheaper alternatives out there on the market where you're getting a lot more for your money. But I prefer this to your sanding and then sealing with PVA glue and then painting and dry brushing. It just seems to be a lot, lot quicker there as well. I like to start from the middle of the base and work it towards the Marine's feet, just so we don't run the risk of getting that up there too. I know some people who do lean in with this day and use it like a mud splats or a back to damage day. And another reason why I've gone for the brown is not just because it matches the board, but with the model being predominantly silver, I think a grey urban base model might get kind of lost in it a bit there too. But by going for a contrasting colour on the base, it should make the model pop and stand out and be a bit more of a feature. There you go, it's really quick, really simple, really straightforward to do. You can kind of just use your tool to give that a bit more texture as and where you want it. This takes a bit longer to dry, so I'm going to grab a cup up and, and there we have it. With a dry brush of Doombull Brown and the base rim picked out in black, that's Bernard, all battle ready, You're ready to get to the tabletop and flame lots of Xenos. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, so they're not going to win any painting competitions, but you are going to have a painted army that's going to look great on the battlefield there too. So we've got the rest of the Leviathan box up to the same standard as Bernard. We'll be adding some extra highlights onto that, making the model pop, and then showing you how to apply transfers too. So really appreciate you watching, thanks very much. Um, if you've got any thoughts or comments, so we're very new to this, so we'd love to hear them. Uh, just pop them on the uh, comment section below. And yeah, if there's any other videos you'd like to see, let us know too. Thank you again.